Hey guys, this video is my companion video for episode number 25 of the Industrial Strength Show, which is my podcast. If you haven't listened to episode number 25 yet, I highly recommend you check it out. I talk about all the different uses for chains in your strength program. They have become very popular. Unfortunately, a lot of people still use them wrong. So check out episode number 25 of the Industrial Strength Show. You can go to defrancosgym.com and click on podcast, or you can check us out on iTunes or Stitcher. Now, this is the setup, the right way to set up a bench press. And we talked about on the podcast, I got more into detail on what exercises you could use this traditional chain setup for. And the chains have a lot of different uses. This is the main way we use them. This is what Louis Simmons really popularized. Um, man, I don't know how many years ago, but I first learned about it maybe 15 to 20 years ago. And it is just a powerful way to develop strength throughout the full repetition. They call it accommodating resistance because the chains, as you see, will, will gather onto the ground in the bottom portion of the lift where you are the weakest. So when the weight's on my chest, a lot of this chain you'll see is on the ground. As I get past my sticking point, which is maybe a couple inches off my chest, and my leverage increases, the chains gather or ungather or come off the ground and create heavier weight at the top. So what happens is, you'll notice, I'll demonstrate a couple reps, but before I go, I'll unrack the weight, and I'll just show you on one side here, but you see how a couple links, you always want a couple links on the ground at the top of the repetition that helps to stabilize the bar. But as I lower the weight on my chest, a good portion of the chain is gonna be gathered onto the ground. All right, so I don't have much chain weight on the bar right now when the weight is on my chest. I have the weight of the bar, which is 45 pounds and maybe an extra five or 10 pounds from the chain. And obviously this will be on both sides. As I press up, watch what happens with the chain. They unravel off the ground and now this barbell just got heavier. So now I have three chains, 20 pounds each on each side, 60 pounds each side. When I'm at lockout, I have a good portion of those chains. That weight is on the barbell now. So I might have 55 or 65 pounds on my chest. And then as I press, the links start coming off the ground. I might be 65 pounds, 85, 95, 105, 115, and about 115, 110 at lockout. So lighter on the chest, heavier at the top. Same thing with a squat. In the bottom position, lighter. Top position, as you get stronger and your leverage increases, the weight also increases on the bar. The only way to do that is with chains. You can't do this with regular weight plates. I just want to show you how the setup is. I'll take one of these off for you. Notice this chain, I guess, is about five feet long. A lot of people just hook it on the bar this way. That is the wrong way to do it. You want to put a clip on the center link and then fold it over. And then you use one of these support chains. We do not count the weight of this support chain. This is just to hang the chains lower. So again, when I'm at lockout, I have a couple links on the ground. When I lower the bar, you want that deload. The whole point of accommodating resistance is to have the weight lighter when you're weaker and heavier when you're stronger. If I just dangle a single chain on the bar, that's not much different than just having 20 pounds of weight plates on the bar. You might get two or three chains gather onto the ground and, and then deload, uh, deload on the bottom and then unload at the top. But you're talking about, you know, each link only weighs maybe a half a pound to three quarters of a pound. So when you hang that, chain straight onto the bar and dangle it from here, you know, you might be getting two or three pounds at the top. It doesn't make a difference. This folding it over is how you're going to do set up the bench and the squat with this support chain. This 
the length of this chain can vary. You have to kind of set it up for your arm or your leg length, but it doesn't have to be a big, strong chain. You can see, I don't know the exact width of that chain, but this is a chain you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store. These five eighths inch chains have to be bought at a specific strength training store or on some boating stores. You, these have to be bought special. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate a couple reps so you can see it in action, and hopefully that'll clear things up for you. One more thing to this video, because at the end of the podcast, I briefly mentioned another application for the chains and a different setup that we use with our advanced athletes. And that is where we set up the chains so they are free swing on the barbell. They're, they're not set up so there's any kind of a deload. We set them up so they're kind of swinging in, in the wind and creating a lot more stability and balance from the athlete when they're doing some sort of a squat variation or a press variation. And I, it might have been a little hard to understand when I was explaining it on the podcast, so I just want to show you the setup that I was referring to. So first, all you need is a regular spring collar. Put that on the barbell. And then the chains would be set up the same way we had them for the traditional application that Louis Simmons popularized. We have the hook right on the center link, kind of fold it over, hook the chains right onto the clip. And now, as you can see, the chains are kind of swinging in the wind. Now this is obviously a completely different application than the traditional way and a completely different training effect. With the, the traditional way that Louis Simmons really popularized, I talked about overloading the top of the movement and that, that really helps increase our rate of force development. It decreases the amount of time we, are, we spend decelerating the barbell so it really helps with strength and power and, and developing power through that full range of motion where this is more stability and control. So completely different training effect. So I, I had the bench set up, I had an athlete doing Bulgarian split squats. So I'll just show you like two or three reps so you can kind of see how I'm required to balance and kind of slow things down so the chains don't swing all over the place. So check this out. 